What is up, everyone? Welcome to Mechs on Deck. It's Monday. It's Monday, my dudes. 8 p.m. Mon- Monday Mania. Mechs on Deck Mondays. <laughs> How is everyone doing this Monday evening? Uh, quick shout outs to um, Not Geo for the six month sub. I'm not sure why that didn't come through. But it it didn't. Let me see if I can push it through again. I don't know why. It's showing in the bottom. Either way, better than a blue Monday. That's good. Chewy, how was your Monday? My Monday was fine. Um, I did kind of get attacked by a child, but you know, <laughs> hey, <it's a> job. <laughs> That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> how it goes sometimes um i'm not sure what's going on with our alerts but they seem to have just they're not working right now no well all good um like the great man from holes once said i can fix that (laughs) not geo with the sub (laughs) (laughs) oh wow um, sorry about you, Brez. That sucks. Coworker sorry, fractured his back. That's that's <coughs> awful. That stinks. So, uh, real quick, shout out to our sponsors. You go to mechsondeck.dixiemech.com. Pick up GMK Burgundy round three, um, and then check out his. He's doing uh, the Dixie Dozen. Uh, So if you buy, I think it's every, if if you buy a keycap set, he picks one random person and they get like, I think they get 20% off. I should know this because he, we talked about it. You get 20% off um, the, you get 20% off key sets for the next year, which is awesome. Um, So 12 winners total, uh, the Dixie dozen. So, um, I, more details you can check out. Let me get this link arena up. So check that out. Uh, be sure to get some awesome sets, uh, this month, burgundy, great set next month, moto light, another great set. So be sure to check that out. Yeah, absolutely. And next up we have zap cables, put up some cables today. Go to, go to zap cables, um, check out in stock okay. stuff check out oh there it is pilot thank you appreciate the resub for five months um i was like oh the audio is not working and then i realized i have it to where i don't hear desktop audio right now i only hear uh (laughs) chat audio um but go to zap cables pick up one of the in-stock cables check out the diy kits he's doing i know he made some changes to Uh, different attachments you can get limos now um more uh, detachables um, available as well as the flash desk mat which is pretty sweet i think you still got those in stock so check it out yeah uh next up switchmod.net slash mechs on deck i can i can grab this now because i'm back in my i'm changed it up again so i got get yourself some lube lube springs keister caps stickers all that good stuff gmk metaverse round two (laughs) you can also pick up gmk metaverse round two using one of the two promo codes the bottom one is the best and for five dollars off of your uh, round one base kit already an inexpensive set make it five dollars cheaper Boom. Yeah. There you go. And if so, I put this in the uh, in our Discord. If it if it doesn't work, if you're not seeing that discount, whenever you get to the checkout in the promo code area area, just write either Chewy or Osiris with a zero, and it'll trigger that five dollars off. So you'll get the set for just a little bit cheaper. Helps you out. Helps us out. Five bucks is like ten switches. Oh, five yeah. bucks and some change. So. So money off shipping. It's, it's great. Yeah. Last but not least project keyboard, head on over to the link in the description and pick up a Tingu. Um, I'm going to show it off here in a second. When we get to mail day, I know I showed it off 
I showed it off last week, but I've got some other things that I, um, that I received today, um, for that build, as well as we are giving away a serious, um, a wind cumulus serious tomorrow during, during the stream where I will build the Tingu. So, um, definitely come back tomorrow night to check out the Tingu build. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excited to see that racing draft it's going well um uh, i'm it's it's monday it's the start of the week so you know full full speed ahead if possible got some good sleep last night so yeah we'll uh switch it over to a little mail day why don't you go first this time and right. i'm actually going to go get what we talked about so okay okay have a second so, be right back all right well chewy goes and grabs his mail I do want to show off the Tengu again. So this is what we will be building tomorrow. This is the Tengu. A gasket mount Alice style layout. It's pretty freaking sexy. We posted some pictures that I took of it last night. It looks amazing. Yeah, you saw dog hair because I live. I have a dog that sheds. All right, it happens. It happens okay calm down but yes come back tomorrow night 8 p.m um check it out and during this stream we will be giving away this and i promise this is the one that you're actually getting because this has the brass weight this is a wind keyless serious or well just the uh actual brass not the pvd we are giving away a Win Keyless Series. Big thanks to 159 and Project Keyboard for um, offering this up and and letting us give this away. Um, so we will be giving this away tomorrow during the stream. So come by, figure out how to how to win that. You do have to be present to win. Um, the only thing you'll have to buy is a PCB and switches and um, all that. But you'll get this, and there's a plate back. I actually really like, I think both Chewy and I really like the uh, brass a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just a, we'll make a note of it tomorrow as well. International viewers, just because sometimes international shipping can get a bit much. We will ask to cover uh, up to, we will cover up to what it would Let's be see. for continental US shipping um, and anything outside of that, we'll ask you to cover. But at the end of the day, 20 30 bucks for a solid solid serious boy so i did look at it i was i've ranked it number two nice i thought it was three so this is a uh, probably one of the best boards of last year that we agreed on the palm plate is in here i just didn't take it out because i didn't want to mess it up and then i've got two other things that are kind of the same so I got a bag of switches today from 159. These are the switches that we're putting in the Tingu. These are actually uh, Telio housings with what Chewie and I have decided we're gonna call Oompa Loompa stems. Um, they're the UHMWPE stems. Uh, these things are insanely smooth. First time messing around with these. Um, these are not lubed. The spring is lubed, but the actual switches are not. And they are freaking smooth as hell. And then he also sent me some Oompa Loompa stems for me to try out. So I'm really excited to put these in some housings that I have. And I am going to mess around with them and see which ones I like. I am excited to try them as well. Yeah. So that's it for me. Let's move on over to Chewy. What you got? What I got. All right, so I'll start off with the big one. I got this actually last, not this past Saturday, the Saturday before, but we didn't do mail day because it was, we were on Man of Interest's uh, show. The Cool Board, which we had a blast. You should go check out Man of Interest. But boom. There we go. Oof. The Austin in its glory. I'll be building this next week. Let's see if we can there that black looks really cool it's it's like satin almost it's very yeah. it's like matte i really like it uh black came out really well um 
So excited to build that. So be sure we'll make an announcement over the weekend. But that will be next weekend. I got some stabs, some prime KB stabs. Um, and then this is about what's going in. This is for a planned secret future build. Um, the 89 gram novel key springs. So nothing to see their springs. And then I got some creams um, and I'm I have not opened this bag yet. And I'm going to open this bag <laughs> and take a deep inhale and see what happens. So I have a little desk fan right here. I'm going to turn off. So no, nothing gets. Give it a little shake. <laughs> How was that? Was that good? So our topic. <laughs> it's bad. Oh my god. It's stuck. It's like in my throat. Oh. Sorry. I'm like tearing up. That was intense. <laughs> Why do they smell bad? Palm smells bad. Um, and then they're just packaged together tightly. And um Yeah. What's funny? It's like if you burn if you like if you burn plastic, like that smells bad, and it's just that. Um, so, <laughs> how'd that hit? It hit hard and fast. Well, what's weird is that you would think that if it's the palm, it would the serious would smell terrible when you get it. And I don't know if they do when one fifty nine gets them, but it doesn't smell. It has never smelled for me. Like I just opened that one up, and it didn't smell. So I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm up. Man, you could, that's like, you could get that instead of smelling salts and get someone out of a coma. Anyway, our topic today. <laughs> well, let's move on. Uh, well, let's, we'll switch, we'll switch back. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe that novel keys guy smells. <laughs> um, no, so we're, today we're going to be talking, we're going to bring a little salt in. A little salt. We like spice. We like talking about getting people amped up and riled up so today we're going to be talking about vendors and uh certain vendors and certain decisions that some vendors have made um that while we may or may not agree or disagree with them there seems to be ha it seems to have a few people um what's the word i'm looking for i guess on different sides of the opinion or they just don't care who knows so um We've had a few different people recently um, with group buys. Keycap group buys, obviously extremely popular right now. Um, <clears throat> and a big part of Keycap group buys, for those who don't know, uh, is MOQ. And MOQ uh, stands for minimum order quantity, for those who do not know. It's like that Chris Pratt meme. The I don't know what it is and at this point. I'm too afraid to ask. <laughs> um, and so... How sets do in the first couple days are um, in large part going to show how the set's going to do overall. So sets like, unfortunately, Sparta um, just was not doing well. It had you know less than 10, I think, on day one. Um, and so, you know, you can kind of look at that and go, well, it's, if, if we're day one, you know, what's the average? I don't know. the I don't know the math. I can do it real quick. <clears throat> but. Uh, where's my, there's my calculator. If it goes for 30 days, I buy, so you need to sell about eight kits a day. And if you can't even sell, and usually day one's going to be a pretty big yeah. showing, you know, people are, it, that, that shows the people that were excited and we're going to buy day one. Right. Uh, there's nothing against buying day one versus day 30. They don't care. They're, you get the set regardless, but I mean, look at something like Olivia. Yeah, I mean, Olivia within the first week had like completely outdone. It had outsold the entirety of all keycaps that sets that ran in November in like a week. In like um, three days. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit crazy. Um, yeah, and obviously it's rough to see things not do well and we've kind of we had a good like six to eight months where 
everything hit. I, I, it was probably longer than that because it had been everything had been hitting for a while because mm-hmm. it had been only a few that, group growing buys. that bubble. Yeah, it had only been a few group buys, and then we shot up to five, then we shot up to eight, then we shot up to sixteen. Um, you know, we had talked about it in November. Is is the bubble popping? of GMK sets of keycap sets as a whole. And there has been a change recently in the way that things are, I guess, marketed the way things are done. Mm -hmm. So first things first showing showing numbers is actually kind of an interesting, you don't see that most, most people, most businesses, most anything, they're not going to say you can't go, to even a really a small company and be like, how many of these did you sell? Like, that's not, you know, mo- like shoe releases. I know, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ties between the sneakerhead community and the, and the keyboard community. And a lot of times they don't release numbers of how many they actually sell or how many they've made. Sometimes they do. And usually that's whenever it's a lower number. So we're in this very strange, uh, side of the hobby where i guess you know we used to um because the 250 mark was harder to hit and that's something that you would hit three weeks in uh and that was kind of a celebratory all right we got there 250 it took us three weeks but we got there and now you know we're hitting 250 in a few in a couple couple minutes sometimes but usually the first couple days uh i mean waves hit the first day olivia hit the first day dracula hit the first day uh, 9,009 hit the first day. Like all these sets are doing really, really well. And then with the kind of, what's the word? Um, the norm, the, of what's happening is showing all your numbers. That's kind of strange to me that, you know, we're at this point now where it's like, you don't even really need to show your numbers, but if we stop showing numbers, so I guess the question here is, do you stop showing numbers? Cause if you sh- stop showing numbers, you might piss a few people off, but no one no one is entitled to knowing these numbers yeah and i think a lot of the numbers thing you know if you talk about at least the way that like drop used to be or like coordinated in the way that they had everything done it was all based off of a number tier where it's like if it hits this it's this price if it hits this it's this price um, and that was for their entire site, and they've moved away from that. They still tell you how many are purchased, but they don't tell you. Like keycaps are like the only thing that are really broken down the same way. Um, even on some of their other products, where it's like multiple options, they won't tell you how many of each option are sold. Like when they used to sell fountain pens that came in like seven different colors, they wouldn't tell you how many of like red pens they sold. How many? black pins they sold um (laughs) so it's one of those things it's like even in our own hobby we don't know how many how many red tingus 159 is sold right now like we won't really know unless he chooses to release that information a lot of time that doesn't a lot of times it doesn't get released um we can ask him and you can always ask people but uh, it's not something that doesn't necessarily need to be 100% transparent. Um, I think, I think it's, it's still interesting that we are in that place. Um, it's rough because of right now we are at a place at where least. certain, <laughs> we're at a place where certain keycaps are struggling. So the, I think what a lot of people do is they put a lot of weight on the MOQ uh, numbers. They put a lot of weight on that sale number. Like if they see, oh, it's at 220, I'll go ahead and get it because I I know it'll hit. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's at like 120 a week out, they may not buy it because they don't think it'll hit, right? Like there's that thought process in their head. My thing is, is if these vendors know they're going to buy it out anyway, what's the point? Yeah. Like, why yeah. do that to, like, why give P- 
people that mindset, right? That thought process. Why even have that be an option, right? Yeah, and B locks. We'll get to that. Um, your question uh, that that is definitely on our uh, list of things. Are and I say list. We did make a list for tonight. Uh, <laughs> behind the scenes, mix on deck. <laughs> um. So, but yeah, it's it is interesting whenever you if if it, if it's a set like you know like Moto Light, that's gonna hit MOQ. Like that's you know you're you're most likely you are. 99.9 percent safe on taking a set that is similar to another set that is very very popular um and one of these I, I call them safe sets um where you know it's a set that it's not offending anybody and you can get it as the base kind of white beige gray uh or you can get these fun accent colors so if you take a set for like that for example for example you know it's going to hit, so you're not gonna, you're not worried. You know the other ones you're kind of looking at, like GMK Delta. That was one that had to be bought out. Uh, solid set, just ran in a tough month. Uh, it was a tough month for every single set, um, and so you know you're kind of like worried, like oh I don't know if they're going to be doing these extras, and I can totally see how that would mess with someone's mindset because the issue is you go oh well, I get a refund, but some people. You know, some people might only be able to afford one key set every two or three months. And so if you're going, well, I really like this one. And I really like this one. I'll buy this one. And then they you find out, oh, it actually is not going to make it. And then it takes a couple days to get your money back. You're tying up your funds for a few for a week or so, a couple weeks. And then what you know, now we're starting to see key sets run in the middle of the month versus, you know, all just the standard you know, starts on the first, ends on the last day of the month. So I can totally see how that might frustrate people in going, well, I don't know if I want to tie up all of my key cap money for this month or even this quarter of the year on a group buy that may or may not hit. And then I'm going to miss something else. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, that's the worst thing, right? Like you're in a situation where let's say what's two sets running right now. Uh, We'll say moon, moon dust and Fuyu, right? Two sets that are not, well, we don't really know where moon dust is at. Cause it's kind of, they haven't really posted a ton. I don't know if they posted today. I haven't looked at it, but those are two sets that were kind of not at super high levels in the first couple of weeks. Um, say you're choosing between those, you choose moon dust and it doesn't hit and they decide not to buy it out. And you and Fuyu hits or Fuyu gets bought out and now you lose out on it, right? Like now you have to pay for an extra. Like granted, you could just wait and buy another set next month. But what if you really wanted like you had to have one of those two? Yeah, I haven't I haven't paid attention to whether or not he had said he's going to buy it out or not. I'm just using it this I'm just using this as a like hypothetical situation of you buy one it doesn't hit and you miss out on on b because of it um so yeah I don't know. gmkb <laughs> <laughs> don't want to miss out on that set um yeah and that's and that's the, you can i mean in this hot nothing's guaranteed obviously but in this hobby you can for the most part you're going to be able to trust novel keys, Dixie Mech, Canon keys, Kono. Uh, Kono is a little bit iffy because they run so many. Um, and sometimes they don't, you know, it's, it's not impossible uh, for them to go, well, we decided to run three and only one did well. We're not going to buy 200 kits of something that's not selling. Um so when you're buying from those, but these smaller vendors, that's where the, the, you know, the not trouble in the sense that they're doing anything wrong. It's that sometimes these sets are just kind of overshadowed. Um, and so at this, you know, at this time, it just kind of makes you go, well, you know, why, why should I pay? Why should I be paying attention to these MOQ numbers? And do they even matter? Um, and so that will bring us to the kind of hot topic that, um, we had somebody bring up to us as well as beadlocks is we have started to see vendors release extras numbers on day one, 
which could be potentially seen as misleading. Um, or it could just be the fact that they're like, we, we know how many sets we want to buy and we would rather just buy that and make that a final purchase before we, before having to make any decision. Down. Yeah. And I think, you know, someone had said, put in chat earlier. It's like, it's all about transparency to me. This is being the most transparent possible, right? Like this is, this is the vendor saying, this is, how much I believe in this set I am purchasing personally this many because that's, that's what it is. They, they purchase whether it's out of the profit of the set, whether it's, you know, it's their own money. It's that company's that vendors money that they're putting up for those extras. You know, this is them saying, this is how much I believe in it. We only need 30 kits and we're good. Right. Um, I think it, it's one of those things. It's like, I know a lot of extras are gauged on the, how well the set does like at the end of the day, like if a set sells a thousand, they might buy 400 extras instead of 200, which that obviously can still happen. But I think it, I don't know. It it really shows us it's it's not like these vendors are 100% buying out 250 sets. They're not just like buying it to MOQ immediately. They're getting it somewhat close. Um, um I mean and, and this this is a very like cynical way of thinking of it. I'm going to answer Starstone's question. This is what if they don't know say how many like there are 250 bought and we don't know if they bought 20 extras or 200 extras cynical answer who cares yeah it doesn't matter like do we you know, need I, to know do, is that is that information the the reason that this is happening is because it's different and people don't like change it's it's not mis it's not misleading because it's not like they're basically instead they're not saying this is how to from vendor to another vendor it might appear that way. i totally get that because it might say haha look look how well I'm doing compared to you. That might be taken that way. But to the customer, it's look, this set's going to get made. Like we're, we're at 243 on day one. And it's like, awesome. Now I know the set's going to be made. Um, so end of the day, like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with Eric. Like, I think that it doesn't, it's transparent. They're going, Hey, we're, we're buying this many. And I think that, Oftentimes we look too much into the numbers and go, well, how do I know if this set's going to be successful? We don't know. But at the end of the day, what, what's like, what's funny to me is a vendor, a vendor is, um, a vendor could come out and go, well, we sold, you know, like at the end of a group buy, it's like, oh, we got to like 390. And then it's like, we hit 550 sets. Like to me, that's, just this that's the exact same it's like okay cool so you had sold 550 sets because you bought an extra 120 or 220 sets and so it's like final numbers big numbers small numbers don't really matter i mean i guess the final number matters so that people will know how rare a set is and maybe the judge based on how much you can resell it for but should that be a big reason like do we i mean i I don't know. I think I I think what a lot of people look at it as um and they see that there could be the issue of like okay, day 1 they release that they're going to buy or they release that it sold 230 sets, right? It actually only sold maybe 30 and they bought 200 extras. Um I think there's a worry that what'll happen is as it sells more the the vendor will scale back their number of extras. But, and I could see how a lot of people would think that's like a, like a messed up thing to do. It's bad. I'm not saying it's, it, it's not a messed up thing to do that. It's not bad, but at the end of the day, what are you hurting? Right? Like if it hits, it hits people. It's not like more people are buying the set because they need to, 
it's not like we're having situations where one person is having to buy, is putting it upon themselves to buy 20, 30 kits to make it happen. You know, it's, it's maybe a vendor, maybe f not f falsifying numbers, well, kind of, I guess, in that situation, but on that, yeah, they're, that, pre well, they're but, presenting, but if they, they're not coming out and saying this right. is how many extras I bought. It's, 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 I don't know. It's a weird situation, but, and I think that could happen. Who knows if it is? I don't think it would talk to a lot of the vendors, talk to pretty much almost all of them at this point that run key sets. I think the only one we haven't had on is, um, key dot. Yeah. The key dot co. Um, and we've talked to people that work very closely with. Them yeah. Too, so, so I don't think that they're going to do that. I don't think that they are going to go in and say, oh, we hit 230 or two or 250 on day one or 300 on day one, when in reality they bought 250. And then I don't think they're going to scale that back as, as it goes up. In reality, I know most vendors, as it sells more, they buy more extras because they know that that shows the want for this, this set in the community. And in reality, like we had said before, it just means the set gets made. Yeah, and and to counterpoint of Starstone, um, sorry, I'm just like arguing with you tonight. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll take it to PLs. Um, but high day one numbers, it does it. It might create FOMO, but like at the end of the day, a vendor can't be blamed for FOMO. FOMO is a psychological thing. That Isn't FOMO just good marketing, like successful yeah. marketing? <laughs> like, it, it, like you, I feel like yes, it might create FOMO, but it also might. Um, it also, you know, th at that point, it's kind of like that's not my fault that you feel like you have to. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you know, like it's not Key Cult's Key Cult's fault that they have a thousand people entering. That means that they made a good product. You know, and I know that boards are completely different. Because most of the time or a lot of the times, especially for the boards that people want, there is a cap. So it's not like they have numbers. Um, but <clears throat> false. Not, is it a false number, though? Because it's not like, hey, we sold 350 and then they're sitting there and they're like, haha, we only got 200. So I would I would say that it's actually not a false number. I, at the end of the day, it might be like, oh, well, maybe, you know, you're not being 100% honest that, hey, I bought, I the vendors have already bought this. If they came out and said, hey, the vendors had already bought this, I guess my question is, would that be better? Um, but at the end of the day, like, that, no one really needs to say anything. We, you know, I, I'm under the impression and personally that, like, I think that we should start moving away from showing these numbers. Yeah. And, and like, here's the thing, like when I'm thinking about it in false numbers, like how we just talked about the fact that maybe people put out that they're buying 200 sets and then as they sell, they back down on that number. Is that even really an issue? Like, is that even really false at that point? Cause in reality it's them saying, this is what I'm willing to do. Right. Like, you're just basically just purchasing that from them anyway. Like it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's just a <laughs> weird situation. Neck. Sorry, sorry. To interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> neck neck is no number. I think, I think it is, it maybe is a little bit disingenuous, like Metallic Charles said, but it's like at the end of the day, this is what they're willing to put up if they need to, right? Like they're showing, this is what I'm, they're basically flopping it out on the table and saying, this is what I got, Right. If y'all are willing to 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 pick up the the last little bit of this, we're set. We're ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know, and and maybe you know, maybe I'm missing. Something. Maybe I'm just living under a rock. But so far, I don't think we have seen someone back out of extras. Um, so maybe maybe they might sell a couple extras during like one of every now and then. We'll see. Like I forgot, I think one uh, one fifty nine did it at Project Keyboard. It was like a flash sale of Bingsu, like on mm -hmm. Thanksgiving or something like that. Um, 
So, you know, maybe that might come out of their extras, but I'm not saying that's exactly where it came from. I'm not trying by any means to throw anyone really under the bus. But if someone comes out and says, you know, hey, we have 400 extras, like, and that's another thing. It's like, you shouldn't even tell people how many extras you have. Just say it. Just say, we have extras. Like, I am very pro, like, for the, you know, please... You know, I'm very pro, like, hey, you need to hide the numbers. I don't think people should see numbers. So I think it's one of those things where it's like, we are so accustomed to this hobby for it to get bigger. We Not every bit of information, uh, not every single number needs to be released for this to grow because then people start asking all these questions and start getting all riled up. And it's like, yeah, I know that's kind of a weird way of being like oh we need to shelter everybody from this information but end of the day it's kind of like how much do we need to know if like you, and this is the only hobby this is the only place in the world of me buying things that i know how many of something they have yeah and i mean i think you could still put out numbers in a way i think like if you do it like hey you know on geek Hack, hey this we hit moq like you don't even you, you don't even have to tell people really what is going on 100%. And then at the end, if you want to, you can release this is how many we sold ex- exactly, you know? This is how many are out there. Um uh DD4NG, I do not believe so. um that isn't really that common of a I mean, you can kind of reverse the math and figure it out if you want to. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, Pluto 19, you're right. Like if someone came out and said, I've got 400 extras and then they were like, I've got 200 extras. Yeah, that's crap. Cause you, you, you went back on something that you said, that's just plain, like not being a great person. Like yeah. if now, if you, if you came out and said, Hey, I've got to keep, I bought 200 extras. I'm releasing 180 because I've got to keep 20 to make sure that like, you know, I don't have, you know, that's just basic. Like, you know, I know Dixie doesn't sell his extras until everyone is happy with their order because the last thing you want to do is quickly sell your extras. And then someone go, Hey, uh, my package was broken in 40 billion pieces and burned in a fire. Like, well then you can't just be like, Hey dude, sorry, my bad. I just want to, I just want to say that we were talking about that in like a, is this really bad way? Not because we don't think it's bad, but more of like to show both sides, right? Like to have the mm-hmm. the argument of it. Like, yes, I yeah. think it's bad if you come out and say, yeah, I'm buying 200 and then now I'm only buying 40. Yeah, like at the end, like that's, that's obviously cool. messed up, but I think there's a way you could convince yourself that it's not. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it just, uh, to me, it all goes back to how much information do we really have? Like how much information is, is, is in it, is out there that needs to be known at every single time. You know, we've, we've talked about this before when it comes to like, let's, we'll bring it to boards. Like people like to, people want to know the exact cost of a board. And it's like, you don't need to know that. Because people, you're not, nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is like, you're not sitting there going, you know, when people buy a board, are you expecting like them to just do everything else for free? Like, I don't know if you've seen pictures. I'm just, and this isn't a board. This is a keycap set. I don't know if you've seen pictures that Dixie posts of, um, I forgot what key set it was. I think it was minimal where his entire living room was like to the ceiling stacked with packages of minimal. Yeah, that was minimal. Yeah. And that's like, no, he's, he's got to take, he's got to get money for that. He's literally, he's, he's spending days and weeks of his life and he bought a car (laughs) car so he could physically take board or keycap sets to and from. He's not just doing that because he loves the hobby. He's doing that because he needs to, he wants it to be a business. And, the, you know, we've got novel keys and Dixie, these full and switch mod, these full time uh, and 159, these full time vendors because they're able to make money off of it. So 
No, they're not going to release numbers. No, they don't need to release numbers. We see a lot of numbers. We don't need to see every single number. Yeah, I think you could just say we hit MOQ and everyone would be fine. Yeah, because in realistically nowadays with the way things work, the um, prices and everything they don't really shift down. Like they they don't shift down the way they used to. Like the base price of a kit is significantly less than it was a year and a half ago. I know a lot of kits have gone down with the number of keys. Um, but even then, like when you factor everything in, it's still a little bit less, you know, you're, you're getting exactly what you need. You're not paying for most people will say the generalization of the community. Most people are getting what they need out of the smaller base kits for less money than they were. Um, before, like you have your, your, your people who are in ISO, your people who want numpads, sorry about y'all. You gotta pay, uh, you gotta pay more. Sorry. It sucks, but. So, uh, hey man, I need my iPad, this box that covers up the screen. <laughs> um, but. Oh, shoot. Did you just drop hey. your Austin? <laughs> Good packaging. <laughs> um. But, By the way, real quick, sorry, stash builds, board, Rosinski, and plume keyboards. Thank you all for the prime subs and stash boards with the regular sub. Thank you. Yeah. You're, I don't even know where I was going. I'm sorry, I interrupted you because did. I dropped this on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you're, you're paying less, getting mostly the same thing for a lot of people. And oh, I don't know what I was trying to say. So that's what I was saying. Cool. There it is. We don't right. necessarily need a hundred percent numbers. You want to be happy that, Hey, you sold it. Like, I think it'd be nice to know. It's like, Hey, we hit like hit milestones, but we yeah. don't need exact. We don't need exact. Now. I don't, you know, I don't care that a set. If, if a set, it's like, to me, it's like two fifty five hundred one thousand. 1000. Yeah. Like, and and I'm not entitled to that information, but it would be nice to have it. Well, but. just like you brought up the point of like people, there's been some issues recently in the last couple of months where things like, you know, invoices for how much boards cost were released or people wanting to know full cost for things. And like, we don't, one, we don't really deserve to know that. Like, we're not doing like these vendors, these designers, you, you know, let's give them a little bit of credit for the work that they put in. Let's let them take a little bit of money, right? Like realistically in most industries, like you just get bent over in terms of profit margin. Like, and you, and you don't even necessarily a hundred percent realize it. Like I work in hospitality, right? I work at hotels, right? our food cost for our like actual for our events, for our banquets and stuff like the events that we have. And for most hotels, it's, it's like 15% or less. That's, that's the cost of what you pay. It's like 15% cost. You can't compare this hobby with other things. You know what I can compare it to is it's similar. It's musical instruments. Yep. Because I know the cost of musical instruments in terms of what it goes from a manufacturer to the vendor, AKA where Chewy and I used, used to work. And it's still like 30 to 40%. And only on the super high end, does it go less than that? Only on the super high end, does it go less than that? Mm -hmm. Like there are very few things. And we're talking like, we're talking like guitars that cost like $9,000 where they have like a 15% markup like your PRSs of the world. Yep. PRSs. Now, and I mean, in the sense of you can't compare this hobby to other things, you can. If you buy stuff, if it's a hobby and you buy things, then it's just like every other hob hobby, you buy things. Um, so, end of the day, like, you you are buying unless you make something. I mean, if you, if if you want a board for the cheapest possible cost, go get it made. Yeah, and you'll pay Do it cost. yourself. There's nothing stopping you, Chewy. This time last year, this channel didn't exist. 
we the Baca 60 was a freaking napkin drawing and it was nothing more than that it was never really like there was ambition and that was it they we didn't know how to get there we didn't know who to talk to to get there and sitting here a year later he made it happen that's all you got to do in a, sitting in a case in there it like, just it's talking to people talking to the right people and putting in the work and the effort um and if you don't want that you're going to have to pay more um so god there was something else i wanted to mention that um oh man it's going to drive me crazy anyway i'm it's monday man um <laughs> But yeah, I think, you know, it's just, it's tough because, you know, Starstone said something earlier that was this, this hobby would riot if you took away the numbers. And if you scroll up, not Geo said they would get over it. I think so too. I think it's just, people don't like change. People don't like change in anything. Um, just the other day, I threw a little hissy fit about the TX60 V2 because I was just like, me. I don't like it. Like it's, they <laughs> changed it and I don't like it. Like that's literally what I did. I was all pissy because I thought the bottom was going to look different. It's okay. I was too. And I didn't even want yeah. it. <laughs> I was like, this is disappointing. So, uh, it's just one of those things that like, you know, we're, we're all human and, and you're entitled to your opinion. You can think and you can, and the, but the thing and what you do vote with your wallet, if you don't like, if you don't like what someone's doing, don't buy it. Yeah. Like I know that's kind of a, dickwad thing to say but like is it though if you don't, like is it though? i mean it's like i i get where the people are coming from like but i want but i hate that the person that's doing that is doing the well, it's like well are you how much are your wants bigger than your morality yeah. <laughs> in this situation <laughs> you need you need tango you. exactly <laughs> um and so it's just it's tough. It, it's a, it's an awkward situation because of the way things have run. We've seen a lot of changes recently in the last year. Uh, this hobby has basically doubled and we've seen everything change uh, from the amount of vendors and the amount of group guys and all that stuff. And to me, it's about time we start seeing a little bit more change and a little bit more of inform. We don't, it, I'm not entitled. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know a lot of things about most things that I buy and it, it doesn't do much for me that I know, you know, I, I have these, this number, it's like, Oh, Terra sold 300 versus Dracula selling, you know, 3000. I'm like, okay, what does that mean to me? Okay. Well, Dracula was a super hype set, so it should sell for a lot because a lot of these numbers are like what people want for mech market. And so it's like, all right, well, Dracula sold for 3000. So, uh, that means it's a really hype set, so it'll sell for a lot. Yeah, but there's also 3,000 sets, right? Well, Terra wasn't that hyped. It was only 263. Yeah, it also means that it's an extremely rare set compared to other things. So it's like, yeah, what is it? Like, what is, oh, I know what I was going to say, and I'm going to write it down once I get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think 159 just brought up, like, growth requires money. That's very true. Um I think, you know, we had a discussion a couple of days ago where we talked about things in the community, right? Like more people in this community, more money in this community in terms of more people buying things, not like one person just buying everything, like more people buying things across all spectrums of ranges in terms of what's available. So like your people who just buy tofus, your people who go all the way up and buy TGRs and key colts, right? Like everything in between. More people buying all of that. Thank you, Japanese Horror Rider, for the thousand bits. Appreciate it, my doggy. Um, more people I buying that. I want to clip that. <laughs> just, yeah, he's such a G that he does it all the time. Definitely appreciate it. Just clip it and hit it. Um, but more people in each one of those tiers, more people buying things makes everything better. It allows these vendors to do more, to be more professional. When there's more money going around, more money coming into these vendors, they're able to do more. And things like, call it out, I'm going to call it out. Things like Lumina don't happen. 
things I like <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <My> th- bad. <laughs> things like things like m0110 don't happen where it's it's just like hell with vendors and life gets in the way when you have more money and you have vendors that are able to go full time vendors that are able to put every little bit of themselves into it quality shoots up the numbers that we're able to produce shoot up the time things take comes down our relationship with our manufacturers gets better if we're buying more things manufacturers get more money they get happier they are bigger sticklers about what is happening at their factories for their best customers just nature of how it is you're going to try a lot harder for someone that's spending two million dollars a year with you than someone who's spending two thousand yep like what are you talking about (laughs) (laughs) i like it it's one of those things if you talk to 159 dixie mech even mike's mike if you can tell that these people they're not just like satisfied with where they're at they're not satisfied with the level of production that they have how many things they're getting out what they can put out each year (laughs) they're putting money back into the community they're bringing in people they're trying to get more people to come on to answer questions to help design things to do marketing to put out better products to get things out to customers faster like I don't know. I'm not like not trying to shill, but we wouldn't be where we are without vendors like Project Keyboard, Dixie. Us personally, us as a hobby, we wouldn't be able to exist. We've been able to do a lot of stuff that's helped us grow. And guess who's helped us? Dixie. Zap. Zap was one of the biggest helpers right off the bat. Like Zap Telfus, Switch Mod, Dixie, you know, all these great people. Nathan, Top Clack. Top Clack wouldn't, wouldn't be where they are if it wasn't for certain vendors supporting them. So, like, this hobby is growing. I mean, it's, it's Quakem said it forever ago. We're growing together and you know, it, that's, that's vendors and content creators and the community as a whole, because guess what? More people buy things. I mean, look at key cult there. You can only get 40 of something. Now they're selling in the hundreds. Hopefully soon they're selling in the two hundreds and that's because people are buying it. So, yep. but this is what I was going to say earlier, because this is something that, <laughs> that popped up. I think it was during Dracula, um, and we just hadn't started our spicy talks yet. Um, our nice, like, spice, spicy fireside talks. Um, but the, the idea that people would get, or they think that they are guaranteed money back because of a certain number being hit. I'm like, you know what? That's cool. Mass Drop did it. Awesome. If you want, money back if you want four dollars back on your set congratulations like don't spend all your four dollars at once i got just to bring this up modern dolch hit 500 kits and i got like four dollars back. and i literally thought to myself it probably spent he probably spent more time typing out my info or clicking the four, even if it's four buttons, I'm like, he spent more time than it was worth to refund me $4. Yeah. I'm like, I, I guess I'll go to McDonald's. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we did talk to talk about that because I remember, I remember saying that you don't go to Walmart. Yeah. We've talked about at it the end of the just... week. You don't, you don't go to Walmart on Monday, buy a, 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 a gallon of milk and then on friday go back and ask them how many gallons of milk they sold and ask for a r- refund percentage based on how how many they sold like we did so we did talk about it. you know yeah. whatever it's just we're talking about vendors though and yeah just don't be that guy we should start doing this. we should start doing yeah let's all start going to the same grocery asking for group by person uh, I say a lot of you know, and I'm sorry. I say a lot of things. We're gonna repeat ourselves. Buy a switch tester, dude. I want to go to like Best Buy and try to buy like a TV, a TV or something. Like, like you know how they announce like tech like six months before it comes out. I want to go to like Best Buy and be like, yeah, I want to buy that right now, even though it's not gonna come out for six months. But I want it at like, I want it at cost because it, it's group, 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 group by price. price. Yeah, what the what the. 
the group buy. <laughs> the, the the kid at the kid at Best Buy is just gonna be like, the f- what are you talking like, about, sir? This is my this is, it's like, sir. This is a Wendy's. Uh, <laughs> I want that TV in group buy price. Which I don't know. By the way, if this is a fun thing, all right. This is a little experiment, social experiment, all right. Go to someone who doesn't know anything about keyboard and try to explain to them what a group buy is and then watch their face closely. It's really fun. Me I, trying to explain to my parents I was about to say, when I tried what a group buy kids. was, I've never seen, I've never looked like I've disappointed them more. I was going <laughs> to ask my parents to buy Olivia for me for Christmas. And they, I was like, I got about two minutes into the conversation. And I was like, you know what? Just never mind, because I don't even <laughs> want to explain to you the fact that this isn't going to come until like June. And you got to pay for it right now. Yep. So. Oh, and it might get delayed. And there's there's no guarantee that's going to come in the next six months. Uh, we should go to a company and just be like, hey. Like, and because their first question will be like, are you saying like buying in bulk? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> no, I just want one. No, dude, I want that gallon of milk. I want it at cost in six months. Whenever you get a milk carton that gives this date, I want it then. But I'll give you the money now for an IOU. I thought I muted this. No, it's um, okay. My apologies. You know what's funny pew is, pew. You know, yeah, whatever. There's the guy that I tried to explain, a coworker of mine, when I was explaining group buys. He was the one that gave me probably the most confused and puzzled face because he was just like, so you're just giving a stranger money? I was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is really crazy when you think about it. You're like, there's this website that like for all intensive purposes is a really like pretty crappy looking website. Like, let's be real. Geek Hack looks like it's from like 95 at this point. Heck yeah. Um, maybe a little bit later than that. We'll give it some more credit. It looks like maybe about early two thousands. Early back when Zanga early was 2000s. there. But if if you know what Zanga is, you're hell boy. yeah. Then you were there before MySpace. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's like a O one website vibes. Definitely. Like yeah, we dude. go and we give random people on there money. It's definitely like it. It's real shady when you look on it from the outside. Um, but we do it and we continually do it. There's nothing else like it. Just, I love the, all right, you're going to go on this website and this guy's going to post a Google form and you're going to give them your shipping address and your credit card information. And you're just going to send this money and hopefully it all works out. Dude. Uh, dad, I've made it. Cartoon 91 <laughs> brought up the, uh, the nice ass cars. It would be hilarious to go to like a Lamborghini dealership and be like, yeah, but I want the 2022 model, but I want it for two hundred thousand dollars less. <laughs> <laughs> and just what? But yeah, what are your numbers? How many Ferraris have you sold this month? Yeah, right. I'm afraid of missing out. My single have you? <laughs> Jax, if you could find that, please. Oh man, love him. Do so you not even think so, Zinga exists anymore? I, I, probably not, dude. But um i mean like i said back to back to kind of what the main point of this was which was is falsifying numbers not falsifying is it falsifying numbers if you purchase out your group buy before it even starts really and and is it is it falsifying the numbers is it a bad thing should we care my opinion no you shouldn't it's yeah whatever like at the end of the day Nothing is guaranteed and, you know. You you could realistically think about it the exact same way and apply it to the way that we do it now, right? Like, well, if they were going to buy this many sets, like that last day or after it's done and those last final numbers come out and it's like, oh, it's shot up, you know, 400 sets. Wow. All the extras are added. It's four. It's, you know, it's, it was th- 1000. Now it's 1500. Is that also like misleading to customers, right? If you are going to buy that many, is that misleading to customers? Would, would you have sold more if you said it right out, we're prepared to buy 400. Mm-hmm. Just like, just like things used to get lower on tiers. 
should vendors come out and say, when it hits 250, I'm going to buy 200. When it hits 500, I'm going to buy 300. When it hits 1,000. Yeah. I, I agree true, with Dixon. True, but, but here, here's the other thing too is ju- just as we're saying all of this, they're the people that get upset when they don't know how many extras they're going to buy and they're like, I don't know. Like how many extras are they going to buy? If can, can I miss this? And realistically, am I able to get this set? Um, I mean, I'll throw it. No, I was going to say not to throw shade. I'll throw shade on Dixie. Cause this is a good thing. It's hard to get extras from his set from his website. Nothing wrong with this website. It's popular. He sells popular sets. He gets a lot, but more of the supply is, or the demand is higher than the supply. So it's hard to get, you can't, you're not never guaranteed an extra from Dixie. Um, but you might go, you know, if they come out and say, we're going to buy 400 extra and you're like, oh, I might be able to get that. But if, if they don't tell you how many extras they get and then they close the group by and then go, Hey, by the way, we bought this many extras. Then you kind of, you know, just that somebody might go, I wish I had known how many extras you were planning on buying because now, now that I know it was only a hundred, I'm not going to be able to get that realistically. And I would have rather have gotten it on the group. So it's kind of one of those like, you, if you if you make, I mean, you're you're never going to make everybody happy. So yeah, yeah. I think it's just yeah. Or or they did they joined the group by and missed out on something else. No, there's going to be 500 extras bought. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things too. It's like it just takes a, it just takes a couple a couple months in the community to, and, and some some cl- some clever keep up on geek hack and and looking at those fantastic graphs that get made to realize how many extras people buy and how it scales based on things sale thing how many they sell um so you can judge okay if olivia sold sold 4000 base kits it's probably going to be a metric crap load of extras that i could buy from you know, mm-hmm. like it's worth it for them to buy more, you know. Um, so it, I don't think there's necessarily an 100% okay way. Obviously, the way that everything is done right now is the generally accepted way because it is what's being done right now. It, once you incorporate change, people are going to be upset, right? We're in a community mm-hmm. right now that's exploding. It's going to be a lot of change. And I've said it for a while, and I think there's going to be a lot of people who've been in the community for a long time that are going to be really upset with the way that some things are changing. Um, there's going to be some new people in the community that are going to not get the benefits that we had as people who were in the community in 2017 and 2018. As crazy as that sounds, that wasn't that long ago, but in this community, that was like an eternity ago. Yep. Um, so if you guys have questions for us, by the way, just hit us with Mex on deck and we will happily answer um, as unless I mean, I'm sure we could talk about this for hours about <laughs> whether or not extras are about which is such a funny uh, thing. It's like, what are we going to talk about for an hour? Uh, should we release numbers? Should we all release numbers? numbers. Um, what's better? Lots of little vendors or just the current trusted vendors, but making them bigger and better. Did you hear me ask the question or are you reading? Are you, I was reading and I was hyped because my solder bud. So Delafin is here and I wanted to give him a shout out. I'm sorry. I was reading you a question and you weren't paying attention. I'm very no, upset dude, with you. That's all good, man. It's you and my dad both. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyed the club. Walk, get in line. <laughs> I assume you were reading Jack Static. I was. Question. I All was. right. What's better? Wasn't. Uh, I would say bigger and better. I. It's 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 tough, but when you have, to me, bigger better vendors have more control on good sets coming out and more. I I would rather not have to choose between 12 different sets from seven different vendors. I would rather have to choose from like six different sets between three different vendors. That me, maybe I'm monopoly minded. 
I think, well, I think you, you're applying it directly to sets. I don't know if that's necessarily 100% the intention. Mm-hmm. I think it may be vendors as a whole. Um, so I think the answer to your question is yes. Um, I think if we have vendors, if we have s- some, if we have lots of vendors, right? Like lots of little vendors that maybe are, you know, pinpointed in certain areas, right? Like, they just do their thing, right? Maybe occasionally they'll branch off and do a one-off of something, right? Like like Zap Cables, for instance, right? Like, they're only cables, right? But John really wanted to make a keyboard, really loved the design of the bumper. He's making the bumper, right? Like, that's that's kind of like a one-off thing. It's not, it's not something he's, I, it's not something he's, like, gonna end up making his entire business right his entire business is cables situations like that but then you also want to have the vendors that are there getting bigger and bigger because then they take on these sets that are super hype that sell insanely well they get them out to customers on time they can handle the workflow needed they can handle the talks with gmk the talks with signature plastics um they can handle that they can they can deal, you know, if it's keyboards, they can deal with the manufacturers in whatever country they choose to, to manufacture in. Um. Well, that and th- there's an interesting, like, situation here because if you are a vendor, I mean, it, it, if you don't know this, it's not really a secret. It's probably not something a whole lot of people are just like, bousting about, but if you just think about it, you're going to make more money off keycaps than you are boards because you're going to get more people hyped about a key set than about a board. A board, you're locked into something a lot more. Keycaps are a lot more like shotgun style. You're going to hit a lot more people and get a lot more people to like you. So you're going to make more money off a key set. So what happens? You want to build boards? Sell some key sets. Get one of these. You know, I guarantee you that it's, it's way more appealing to a lot of vendors to go, well, I can sell a few key sets and then do a board here. And then I felt sell a few key sets and then I do a board here and there because that's going to be financially viable for them. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I had really spicy chili today and it was delicious. Um, so that's why I've been burping like all stream. Um, but you know, or if you're a keyboard vendor and you're making all these keyboards, this is great. This is great, but I'm not making a whole lot of, then you're going to go, okay, well, maybe I should run a set. And then you figure out how to boom. That's because you just cut out for like a solid three seconds. It, uh, it's, Making sure it's I didn't mute myself. It's a discord. Thing. Oh, uh, but yeah, it's like, and you know, you, if you sell a few boards then you go, I'm not making a whole lot of money. And then you turn around and do a keycap group buy that might make you a lot of money. And, and then as, as, as a business person, you're like, well, how can I make money? That's your business. You're not, you're not trying to like, you want to release cool stuff. Yes, that's great. But you also need to, you know, eat and keep a roof over your head. And so you're going to go, okay, well, it makes me the most money. Okay. Keycaps. So you're naturally drawn to what's going to make you the most money. People are human. So. Yeah. And I, and I've, I can't remember if I've said this before here on the channel or if I know I've said it in discord, but I kind of gauge a lot of sets would this set have done well? Like when I'm looking at sets, like and talking about what Jack Statics talked about, and I think you can apply this to keyboards as well. Um, is would this set or keyboard have done well in 2017, 2018, right? When things were hard to hit MOQ, when people really had to band together to make certain things happen, right? If something would have been successful then it'd be really successful now, right? It's not going to be successful then. Does it, should it be picked up? Probably not. Um, I agree with Jack Statics. I think making bigger vendors pickier will definitely inspire vendors to try harder, to make more of an effort. Because at the end of the day, we're not talking about little bits of money now. Even for designers of the keycaps, like we're talking about a pretty considerable amount of money if your set does really well. If it sells 1,000 kits, it sells two, 3,000 kits. You're talking about a significant amount of money that you can make from this and there should be some effort there. 
show some hustle. Some hustle. <laughs> show some hustle. Some hustle. Yeah, and, and I said this the other day of Tachuni and a couple other people in our Discord about we focus a lot on being unique and focusing on design. I think we're at a point now where we should focus on things like manufacturing quality, the quality of the products we're putting out, getting pricings, pricing lower, right? Like getting better stuff for the same or less money and getting things quicker, not having things have delays, not having to worry about the issues we've had to worry about in the past, not having year-long group buys, two-year-long group buys. That's what we should be focused on. So, um, yeah, I would say something about artisans, but like, man, I don't know shit about artisans. I know that some look really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really like them. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, and quicker is uh, at the end of the day, quicker is for me and personally is like, if, if you can keep the quality, but do it in. 80% of the time or 70% of the time I tell I tell people that are running group buys overestimate 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 because you will look better if you deliver early if you deliver the same product two months early you will be a god someone comes up and goes it's I'm expecting it by June it shows up in April at your doorstep you have just and, and it's and it's in good shape you have just become the best group buy runner like and you have just made a customer probably for life because they know, okay, you've just gained their trust as a customer. And there's not a lot. It's That's hard to do. That's a very hard thing to do, to gain someone to go. Like, I trust Dixie. I trust Novel Keys because I know that they're going to do everything they can to get things done as fast as possible. And I'm not going to get screwed over by them. Customer for life. Easy. Trust. Some other put people. I won't name names, but you can look back at past streams. Never going to buy from again because you've lost my trust. You've, you've done a bad job. So, and I just reading chat, Jax, I a hundred percent agree with the um, statements that you made in terms of the manufacturing domestically and QC um, from a, from a, menu standpoint i think we need that i think we need some pressure on to uh overseas manufacturers of hey you might lose this um you know all of these accounts all of these companies that come to you to get their keyboards done because you know us is stepping it up and i also agree i don't like chewy i have no idea about it, artisans i don't i i have some one that cool. he gave me they look cool um i like certain things no idea about them though, uh, but I do agree. I think that there have been some recent, especially recently, some um, crappier quality things coming out of both keyboards and key sets. Um, some of the key set stuff's kind of like, I'm not talking about like the GMK issues. I'm talking about like key sets that should that have no business running, running. Yeah. High voltage. So. <clears throat> that sounds like if you're not going to say it, I'm going to say it. <laughs> like, yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, we've talked. Okay, will fix those issues. It's a little bit harder for an artisan. It might be harder for an artisan to go if you go out because then it's like a personal attack where it's like GMK. They're like, whatever, dude, we fucked up. Our bad. Like, we'll just fix it. You go to an artisan who that's a one person or two person. You go, you did a bad job. Like, that's harder to do. Cause you have to like take that on personally. Yeah. And I mean, so. no, I'm no disrespect to the guy that, that is running high voltage. It's, it, it's a set that, that definitely had potential. It needed more work. And mm -hmm. I think that that corners were cut with that set. That I mean, made, go look that's back made when, it suffer. Go look back when keycap renders came and go look at those interest checks, low effort, like, Keycap renders was great to get some ideas laid out. Slew of low effort interest checks. And I think it did a decent job weeding out a few. Uh, but in my opinion, there are some keycap sets that I'm instead. 
just cost yeah cost of labor is always going to be the biggest part here. so unless like unless somebody in the community invests all their time and money in becoming a board manufacturer we're not going to get the same quality and they have teams over there for a lot cheaper um with the ability to do a lot more where it's like just some dude that see and see a bunch of stuff you might get a few boards you, you know you might you, you're limited because then you're running into the issue of well now, now time you know now it's going to take it's going to take me a month to get five boards done a month to get 10 boards done but it's like that's not feasible if you're wanting to grow it super fast um so sleek keyboard says at what point do should could vendors take the risk to move post group by and sell new products in hand i think that's a situation that could happen. I think we're a little bit of a ways from that because, you know, if a vendor going into a group buy needs like 10 grand per se, like that's a, if, if, if someone needs that much money in order to like 100% make sure that whatever can go wrong, does go wrong to a group buy and they can fix it with that money. Imagine how much it would be if you add on top of the maybe 30 to $40,000 that they get for selling their boards. Right. Like that's a lot of money. You're talking about fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Like we're talking about people's annual salaries that you have to have to purchase and then not have anything on or not receive any money for for three, six months. We're a little ways off from that with our vendors, but I think we will get there. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna take the time for them to get to that point. Yeah, quick shout out by the way, Sleek Keyboards, awesome web. In the chat, you should go check it out. He does some awesome stuff. Uh, Beadlock asks, "What are your thoughts about designers that are there for the interest check and pre-group buy, but are ghost during group buy support and marketing?" Depends. One, if they're if they ghost marketing wise, then they're dumb. I'm sorry. Like market your stuff. If you unless you're just done, unless it's like you just don't care about how many sets you you make then you know i mean market like i think you know, it depends I, it, 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 now if you hit like 500 yeah you, or if you're if, you know the guy that from dracula probably is not submitting about a lot of time the other thing there though is depending on the vendor yeah if if the vet if you pick dixie you if if you are fortunate enough to get with dixie you know that your 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 stuff's going to get marketed like hell like your stuff is going to be, you know, it's like that family guy thing where he's just slapping him in the face with a picture of his kids. Like that's, that's Dixie. He's a, he's a master marketing guy when, when it comes to keyboards. I'm sure he's also good at marketing elsewhere, but <laughs> like yeah. he's like, he's good. You, you see pictures of GMK Burgundy all the time. He asks everyone that he sponsors to mention GMK Burgundy, GMK Burgundy, GMK Burgundy. Sorry. Quick show. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's just one of those that's one of those things where it's like if if you pick it a lot of that depends on the vid. Yeah. Yeah, and it definitely depends on who the vendor is. I think I think we'll get to a point honestly where the interest check phase is a um Dixie. <laughs> the interest check <laughs> phase will become basically like a you are sh- you are doing a presentation an online presentation of yourself as a designer you're pitching to these vendors. That's what you are at this point. In, in, in all reality, we know what keys should be in a base kit. If, if the people who are putting interest checks out have done their research and they're doing things properly before they go to interest check, they have things buttoned up to a point where it's like ready to go basically from interest check. It's a pitch, your pitch to get a vendor. Right. And if you get a big mm-hmm. vendor, if you get a Dixie, you get a you get a novel keys, you get a even a Canon keys is has pretty good, pretty good success. I know they've had a couple rough sets recently, but if you get one of those guys that's willing to put in time, money and they're willing to put up money to make sure it happens and market it and, and make sure it happens. <clears throat> maybe you don't have to be there as much. No, you, don't, you don't need to, but you should. Just yeah, you, yeah, you should still like, probably try to market it, but <clears throat> so not everyone wants to be super present in the community, and that's fine. 
It sounded like you said, be the super president of the community. I was like, yeah. whoa, 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 we're getting awful close to political talk. <laughs> we have a super president. I just want to give Both you a, a shout out to Axot. I just played the slap at a bass. Uh, Can't hear it, but I'm, yep. I'm happy that it was it, there because I need that in my life. So any last questions, uh, by all means, uh, be sure to ask. Great questions, by the way. You're asking great questions. questions. Good questions. Also, someone did mention like that uh, Canon keys was doing like the in stock thing. When I brought up those like amounts, I'm talking about like having like a considerable amount, like to the point where it'll be in stock for a while. Like, 50, 60,000 is like a considerable amount of mm -hmm. keyboards. It, it's tough. Like, and, you know, if you buy a hundred boards that could sell out in five minutes. Right. Like, you know, you, you don't have, there's just not enough. There's just not enough money. That's, like, well, 159 just said, imagine stocking a bunch and not selling any, maybe you yep. sell two a day, right? Now you've yep. put $50,000 down and you're making 600 bucks a day. Yep. Like hard rip. Do vendors have any concerns about coronavirus and delays? I don't know. I haven't talked to them about it. Yeah, I don't get if you ask us on our discord, I can mention it to you, um, but then I can ask around. But I. I know Chinese New Year is slowing everything down. Yeah, I, so. I would say we don't know, but I would assume the answer is yes. It, I mean, it has to. There's, yeah, it's, 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 it's an epidemic. Yeah. It, yes, it's official. OK. It's official. It's happening. Three days. Three days. Three days extra. Extra. Okay. So three days. I mean, even if it was two weeks, that wouldn't be the like that's not gonna like ruin people's lives. Yeah, I don't think it's hopefully things get better. Hopefully they figure out how to take care of this issue that is like sweeping the nation. Sweeping the sweeping yeah. the world. Yeah. Has the potential to be very devastating. Um, hopefully they can figure it out, but I, I, I don't know how much it'll, we, don't, we, we won't honestly know until after it's done. Really, the effects yeah. are it's yeah, it's, it's going to come out there. It's like, we got delayed by nine days, but we're back up and running. And it's like, Oh, okay. Well, now yeah. I know. Cause I mean it, like the factories could say, Oh yeah, we're fully operating, but maybe they normally have 50 people and they only have 30 right now. Right, like, yeah. it still takes like, significantly that, long. Yeah, we just hope that everybody in the keyboard factory is doing okay. Well, I think just in general, like, yes, let's not just like respect. say only the people that are going to only think. the people. Okay, <laughs> everyone with coronavirus <laughs> or around it, and the people dealing with any of them, good luck. But also the keyboard people, specifically looking out for you as well. <laughs> An extra shout out hot take we're a bit too entitled to be asking about keyboards on a massive crisis also true but i think it's it's good for everyone if things keep going right like the whole entire world depends on that country at this point to manufacture not just keyboards but a lot of the things that we consume on a daily basis as people and no one deserves to be sick like that on a virus that's hopefully going to be something that we can develop a vaccine for eradicate eradicate that's a big word yeah well, you know that's a 20 dollar word for i'm just trying to impress my dad uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Dad? he's gonna be like all right bud i'm gonna show you this i'm gonna show you this. vaccines are how they get your secret it's just gonna be me talking about keyboard gonna be proud. he's just gonna shake his head. uh vaccine <laughs> so wrapping up stop caring about numbers <laughs> yeah i just yeah just stop caring about numbers um like for us to grow secrets are gonna have to be there numbers are gonna have to be there like our numbers are going to have to be hidden. Things are just going to have to happen that you can't control. If you want to control it, dig your heels in and be a part. 
you know, I, I've I've heard the same complaint about private buys. People are like, I don't like that. I can't get a part of these private buys. Well, do you talk in discords? No. Are you in a lot of different discords? No, I'm in one. I'm like, okay, well, is there anybody running private buys in that discord? No. It's like, okay, well then. Yeah. You got to put yourself fix it, out. Fix there. it. Or fix it. Like fix the problem or stop complaining about it. Yeah. I mean, this community is 100% controlled by the people who are in it at this point. Like, the, like we don't really have a ton of outside factors that affect the community. And like really at the end of the day, three years ago, Dixie was just Garrett. Novel <clears throat> keys was Dox. just Mike. Dox. I mean, I his name chewy. on Geek Hack, I think, is still Garrett Sucks. I was still Chewy. Yeah, you were. Still, well, you were Aslan for a while. I was, I was, I was, that's just my Steam name. That chewy, was, it's been since like I started gaming, gaming. Yeah. 2016, brother. But yeah, well, we're all just regular people. This this hobby can be what you make it like at the end of the day. <laughs> Thanks, Beatlocks. You know, you can go make keyboards if you want. <laughs> I'm laughing at Ted Strong. Uh, real quick, um, I'll just run through these and then I'll we'll <clears throat> talk about tomorrow because tomorrow is an exciting day. Switchmon.net slash Mexon deck to get 4% off your order of lube and springs and other keister stuff. You can also go to hit, type in exclamation point meta chewy or exclamation, exclamation point meta zero Cyrus for $5 off of your order of GMK Metaverse. Um, so be sure to check that stuff out. Zap Cables make some of the best cables in the hobby. Um, he's got in-stock cables right now. Uh, you can go pick those up. They're going to be some of the best, if not the best cables you've ever owned. He's also got awesome desk mats as well. Project Keyboards, you can go to the link there and pick yourself up. Zetengu, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. And mechsondeck.dixiemech.com. You know, Dixie got a 45-foot yacht. We Let's get him that 50-foot yacht, all right? GMK Burgundy Round 2. Get yourself in on the Dixie Dozen, guys. You, you can get 20% off all key, key cap group buys for the rest of the year. Uh, so be in there for that Dixie Dozen. I'm sure if you're a part of the Dixie Dozen, you're probably going to a sweet yacht party. I don't think so. Just, just to clarify... <laughs> I, I'm going to be the asterisk, the the fine print. We do not cannot confirm nor deny that Dixie owns a yacht. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that he doesn't. Listen, just get out there on a yacht in the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> pog <laughs> yacht, <laughs> yeah, dude, big pog. So, um, um, but yeah, tell us what you're doing tomorrow, man. Yeah, so tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central Time, so 22 hours in. 30, no, Time. 22 minutes from now. Just changed. You got there. Building this boy, the Tengu, which is for sale at Project Keyboard sl- slash question mark reference ref equals mechs on deck. Honestly, if you're going to pick one up, please consider using our code or discount or it's not a discount, our link. It helps us out a ton. Um, but it yes, gives us, it, it gives us a lot of ability to Check do cool out. things and we want to do cool things yeah it helps us do guys. cooler things uh big shout outs to 159 for supplying us with this as well as we are giving away a win keyless serious um i showed it off earlier i don't really want to get up right now so i'm just going to show off mine that i've been using just to prove that the one i showed earlier was not mine um so oh, we're dude, giving you've away you've been building that board yeah all night um, I'm a master solder. I did it to where you couldn't, you couldn't see it. Couldn't um, see. But we are giving away a Winkula Sirius, uh, with a with a palm plate. Uh, so come back tomorrow. You do have to be present to win. Come by 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Pacific. Been told that I need to switch the way that we say that. 9, to 9 p.m. East. 9 p.m. Eastern. 9 p.m. Eastern. I don't know how to talk. Words are hard. Time zones suck. Um, how did he know? Uh, because I only have two plates. Uh, look, he got up. We got there. Chat, you got him to get up. Good job, chat. Oh. 
this happening right now. All right, we're gonna go full serious. So this is the one that you can win. This is my second plate. So uh, you you are gonna get some beard hair in your serious. It's officially been in his chin. There we go. <laughs> if yeah, I don't, good luck to everybody. Good yeah, luck good to everybody. Everyone. Uh, come hang out tomorrow. I will be building the Tingu. Um, I'm really excited to build it. It's going to be the first time that I've really spent a significant amount of time with a um, gasket mount board. So very excited. And just come win this. Dude. It's upside down. Come win it. There it is. Which, which color Tingu am I building? I am building a red one. This one. It's actually 159's. He sent it to me to build. And then I'll be doing later uh, this weekend, we will be releasing a typing test as well as like some beauty shots. We're going to do some glamour shots of it and release that. So um, check us out on YouTube for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are we going to hook? Zero, zero, one, Anthony is live. Hit up the Godfather himself. All right. Big shout outs to, to everyone for coming and hanging out tonight. I know this was a uh, spicy one. Hopefully no one hates me or Chewy for our thoughts. The bidet, father. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, you go. I was just going to say big shout outs to all the subs, the follows, uh, the biddies. We appreciate that. But yeah. Yeah, we're going to go raid... Mr. Anthony, 001 Anthony, please blast him with the Godfather. Although I actually, <laughs> is he 100% live yet? Or is he on starting soon? Because sometimes he starts like 30, 90. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it's so loud. Oh my gosh. It's a good His thing that you're doing so that, loud. not me. Yeah, right. It's not there, but still do it. Let's just go ahead and. We'll go ahead, raid them up. Thank you guys for watching. I'm starting the raid. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I love appreciating things. <laughs> Wednesday. Who, who do we got on? Chewy. Who do we got? Uh, we got Drifting Bunnies. Oh, right yeah. after I dropped his board. <laughs> the local oh. homie. Doxed. Um, oh, you get a workout doing this. <laughs> Yeah, come by tomorrow, come by Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Utah time, there you go. 6 Not p.m. Western. Pacific. Boom. You got All there. of the times. Buy a switch tester, y'all.